Swansea in South Wales is a coastal city surrounded by sea, mountains, and sites of environmental conservation, a famous Gower Peninsula of beautiful beaches and environmental diversity was the first place in Britain to be designated an area of outstanding natural beauty. Despite our scenic location and environmental assets, our city was once a big part of the Industrial Revolution. Nicknamed Copperopolis, Swansea played a major part in industrialising copper around the world during the 19th century, a legacy that still lives on in the city. We have also been a major global producer of nickel for over 120 years, whilst just down the river is the Port Talbot Tata Steelworks, producing 5 million tonnes of steel every year. We have long used our rivers and seaports to transport goods in and out of Swansea and in the quest for industry and employment have caused many detrimental effects on our environment. We wanted to find out more about our industrial history and how Swansea became a city. We also wanted to learn about how people are now working hard to change the way we impact our local environment and create new opportunities. Our first visit takes us to the Harvard Morpher Copperworks site in the Lower Swansea Valley, where we meet Alex Langlands to find out more about heritage and regeneration. I'm from uh, Swansea University, uh, where I lecture in history and heritage. Uh, and I've been involved in some of the projects down here, the regeneration projects, taking these old buildings and this old site uh, and looking to the future, really, what, what are we going to do with this site? How are we going to feed the history and the heritage of this site into the way we plan for the future? Would I be right in saying that this copper works was around when Napoleon was still trying to take over Europe? Absolutely bang on. OK, so that gets us right in to the first point I wanted to make today, OK? The origins of the copper works. Where do they come from? Why here? Why copper in Swansea? So what we see here is the coming together of a number of different products, OK? You've got the copper ore itself, which is being mined out of the ground in places like Cornwall and Ireland and North Wales. That's being shipped round to here. And then you've got the coal coming down the river on the canal. And when those two things combine, that's when we see the amount of copper being produced here in Swansea absolutely soar. So at one point, Swansea is producing the vast majority of the world's copper. Copper is, is, is a huge game changer globally, okay? And what it does is it positions Swansea in a very, very central place in the Industrial Revolution. Now, there had already been a number of different copper works up and down the valley. These are small scale affairs, almost workshop type affairs, okay? What the Vivians do is they introduce factory processes, rows and rows of furnaces, okay? They are gonna take copper smelting to a new level and produce all sorts of materials that we see used throughout the 19th, 20th centuries into the present day, okay? So the copper works really goes up. And then we get towards the middle of the 19th century, okay? And then things start to plateau and then they start to decline the copper working industry here and we're left with what we see today. One of the things I think we can say about the, the, the big copper magnates is that it did invest in things like sewage systems. They did invest in what were then up-to-date housing, schools, chapels. So society changed dramatically in the course of sort of 40 to 50 years, okay? Because we can talk about the Industrial Revolution in really positive and powerful terms, but actually we can talk about the damage that the Industrial Revolution did not just to our environment, but to our social relations as well with other parts of the world. But all across the top of Kilvey Hill over there, okay, all of that would have been covered with toxic gases. There are still impurities in the soil today up there. Now, this was a period when Britain literally ruled the waves. And I think there's every reason for us to be proud about that, that, that period of our history. But I think it's especially important nowadays that we really look critically at what the impacts of industrialisation was. And, you know, in, more generically, it gave 
Britain the upper hand. This tiny little island really could rule the rest of the, rest of the world because of its coal reserves, what it was doing with iron, and what it was doing with copper. Um, and that had an impact for societies all over the world being subjugated really to British rule. And that's something we have to contend with. But I think more directly as well, there's a, there's a dark story here in the copper works. And we know that the White Rock Copper Works, for example, had something called a Manila house. And Manilas were small copper bracelets that were very, very popular amongst communities and elites in West Africa. And they would use these Manilas to trade. And they would use Manilas to trade human beings, slaves. And I think one of the things we need to think about is that we in Britain, because of innovations in the industrial age, meant that we could produce these Manilas really cheaply. And therefore we could trade with elites in West Africa for slaves that we could then send over to our plantations in North America. So there's a really very, very serious story that we need to think about that's gone on here in, in Britain more generally, but it's also gone on here in Swansea. And that's something that we absolutely need to confront. Yeah, lo lots of the areas around here you can't, grow, you can't grow food in. And there were farmers that were really irritated with what was going on because the farmers were losing crops, they were losing livestock. So they are making a plea to the city, you know, this stuff is poisoning. Uh, my farm and the, you know the city's answer is well copper's making us all a lot of money being stood here back in around about 1850 1860 something like that would have been a really dark and ominous place so what are we doing with the these remnants of this once great industry here in Swansea the copper works what are we doing the engine houses which we've looked at are all being uh, renovated and prepared, hopefully, for some kind of enterprise and uh, some kind of social enterprise, uh, perhaps restaurant, cafe, visitor centre, something exciting going on. <clears throat> and that, that process has already started happening. That's now being renovated as part of a uh, new visitor centre for Penderin's whiskey. It's, uh, it's a bit on the pricey side, but luxury. So they are investing. National Lottery Heritage Fund is also investing in this. Swansea Council, Welsh Government. This is part of a big regeneration project. Swansea City Centre is in the middle of a major regeneration programme, seeking to improve the city for locals and visitors and create new jobs. As part of the city's facelift, a number of meanwhile use projects are taking place. Arts Arcade, founded by Welsh Government and Swansea Council, is now in residence in a former retail unit in the city centre. Tunde and Gareth from Swansea University and Urban Foundry gave us a tour of their new digital innovations and opportunities available to artists in Swansea. It was really great to see the technologies in action and to play with the augmented reality. Old buildings and car parks were removed to build new structures and green areas. We met James Morgan from the Copper Bay Swansea Arena to find out more. So the city deal, which is projected to be worth at least 1.8 billion and bringing over 9,000 jobs to the region in coming years, is being funded by the UK government, um, the Welsh government, the public sector and the private sector. So there's money coming from everywhere really to, to build this huge project that we have down here to sort of rejuvenate, regenerate the city. And the arena is one of the major projects that's been done here. So along with um, the new park, which has been built to the side of it, which is the first new park in the Swansea area since Victorian times. So that's a really, really interesting thing that they've done. And, um, um, it's a really interesting build they've done up there. It's a sensory park, so there's lots of different things that young people can come in and mess around with. And, and I think that now we have this sort of central point for the art, for culture, for music, for comedy, for performance within Swansea. I think it's going to inspire a lot more people to go into those fields, to be more creative, to dream a little bit bigger about what they can possibly do. I think it's, um, that's the, the, the core of it to me, is that aspiration allowing people to dream a little bit more about what's possible and that magnificent copper coloured building which looks like a spaceship which is landed next to the bay um, I think that's going to be it's a really good sort of central point for that to to um, to, to come from. I've been very impressed by the um, the work you've done um, the projects you've been doing in the Harvard 
copper works and I actually, my family worked there 250 years ago. Uh, my great grandfather worked there, my great great grandfather worked there. They went to Harvard to work in the copper works, the next generation are working in the mines in Asta La Vera and Astra Gunlice. Then they moved to Morrison and they work in the tin plate works. So the story of industry in Swansea and the story of industry in South Wales is the story of also migration, people's family histories, the reason we speak the way we do. The majority of people who work in the arena are from Swansea. Um, ATG who run the venue were very, very fervent in their, in their desire to ensure that the people who worked there knew the area uh, and were able to really sort of tap into what the sort of cultural history of the area, the cultural sort of tapestry of the area to make sure that everybody was represented because representation is so important. Diverse representation is even more important. It's an enormous visual link to our past that, you know, it's, it's a question that you've asked me now. I know you know about it, but other people are going, well, why is, why is it copper coloured? And then we can explain to them, well, the reason for that is because of the history and the industrial history of Swansea. So it, I think it's, it's fantastic that they've used that within the design process and now we have this wonderful sort of um, link with the past through a very modern building. To combat waste products of our local industrial employers, Swansea University has been working hard with Vale Industries in Cleddock. We went along to find out more about how algae is working hard to absorb our emissions to create sellable green products. The Cleddock Refinery, also known as the Mond, was founded early in the 20th century. The Cleddock Corporation refines nickel oxide from their mines in Canada and Indonesia into very high purity nickel products. CO2 emissions are causing world temperatures to rise all across the world. Algae and the chronic plant consumes CO2 as it grows. At the Cleddoth Revinery, scientists are using this plant to consume waste CO2 emissions from the nickel making process. I think from a young age I've always been curious in how things work. I think it stemmed from me being a diabetic and why my body wasn't working. So I've always been interested in, right, okay, the ins and outs, so why doesn't it work? How do we fix it? So this project is just a pilot scale at the minute and we're just trying to prove a point that it could be used commercially and industrially. So this is a really small version. So to get the most out of it, you would need a lot of fences. I think you'd need at least 100 fences to use up the amount of CO2 that industry would want. Um, but we are working on other projects that would put lights inside cubes and things, so it would take up less space. So I think um, that would possibly be the future, that you'd have them in enclosed environments rather than big fences like this that would take up space. So on the rice project, we aim to build these large photobioreactors and they hold 7,500 litres each. Uh, the aim was to use up the waste CO2 from industry and clean it up using microalgae. So microalgae grow just like a plant in a process called photosynthesis. So they take up the CO2 and give off oxygen, just like any plants, but they grow in water. Um, but we can also use the wastewater from industry as well because they like to eat up the metals. So we're cleaning two things in one here. Um, and the idea is then just to grow it up and then once we harvest, once it's got to its full potential, we can then use that harvested product in animal feeds. Since the Nazis blew up Swansea in World War II, things haven't been great. For, for, 50, for almost 50 years, our greatest achievement was, be, and the best thing to happen to us, was becoming a city in 1969. Other than that, we'd been basically just that little bit between Pembrokeshire and Cardiff. Ever since the renovations have began with that billion dollar project, we finally started to become a better place to live again. Well, I would like to see for the future of Swansea is the tit Swansea Tidal Lagoon project. I don't know what it has the project's been renamed to recently, but I wish that was being built and complete because it'll offer more jobs and might help with the prices of electricity recently. I like Swansea because it has nice beaches as well. And plus there's a Mumbles Pier as well, where you can go in the arcades and play games on there. And there's a restaurant as well. The fish, the fish and chips are quite nice, not gonna lie though. And yeah, that's all I have to say. 
In, in the future, I'd like to see the uh, more <laughs> diminished areas of Swansea rebuilt and revitalised and cleaned up uh, to help Swansea's uh, overall look be more brighter and more welcoming to all communities from religion, race, ethnicity, nationality, uh, sexuality and everything else in between.